Here it is. You see how it's actually, look at it coming all the way from Iceland up here. Oh, right yeah. on down, it arcs around, comes down here. So this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And you'll see right here, if we go west from the Strait of Gibraltar, which in the olden days was called the Pillars of Heracles, we come to the Azores Plateau, which is this feature, which is this right here. And what we have here is a triple plate junction. We have three plates. We have the North American plate, we have the Eurasian plate, and we have the African plate all meet right here. And I think I have a more detailed version of that. Right, here we go. Okay, now you can quite clearly and distinctly see the Azores Plateau right here. And you can see the suture line that comes down here, separating the North American plate here from the European plate here, sometimes called the Eurasian plate and the African plate here. So this is a triple junction. So a triple junction is gonna be one of the most flexible and thinnest pieces of crust on the planet. So the theory would be that this isostatic compensation, which causes vertical movements, could be strongly uh, localized around this particular zone of weakness right here. So you can kind of picture this kind of a, an effect and you get these large transform faults that are coming essentially at right angles to the ridge. You could, you could realistically think of those as almost like the Earth's stretch marks. So the question would be, is it possible that this Azores Plateau was significantly e immersed during the last ice age? And I think the answer to that it would be, it quite likely was. We know that today there are just mere islands there, but we know that those islands are the tips of mountain ranges. Aren't those lines also, aren't they also related to the fact that there's material, like the at that ridge, isn't there like a generation of material, like the the plates are moving apart because the mantle is coming up and forming seabed there or something like that? Yes, yeah, so you have upwelling of magma that comes up and then flows laterally to the west. Right. And so to yeah. the west and the east. So yeah. what's happening then is you, you move away from the, the youngest basalts are going to be closest to the ridge itself. Right. Because as, as they're upwelling and spreading out, the further you get from the ridge, the older they get. Yeah, I remember reading that they were that that was how they were finding evidence of shifts in the magnetic poles of the yes. Earth. Because, yeah, yeah, yes. So here's just some of the the nomenclature of that particular area. This is the Azores Islands, and this is called the Atlantis. Curiously, the Atlantis Seamount, mm. the Plato Seamount, the Great Meteor Seamount, and Cruiser Seamount. Let's get back to looking at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Now, 1954, the same year that um, Hans Peterson was publishing in Science, uh, Maurice Ewing, along with D.B. Erickson and Bruce Heason, who were, again, sort of the, the, the godfathers of this science of marine geology, uh, co-authored a paper that appeared in the Geological Society of America Bulletin. And they're talking about the seamounts that we find uh, close to the Azores Plateau. So are we still screen sharing here? Okay, so these are the seamounts. You see them right down here. Here's the Azores Plateau, and here are the seamounts right there. Okay, so I'm going to stop share. He's talking about these particular seamounts, which are named the Atlantis. So somebody decided that they were going to name this sunken mountain Atlantis which does seem appropriate, Cruiser. And the third one um, is called the Great Meteor Seamount. The Great yeah. Meteor, right? It's like somebody knew what they were doing when they were naming those. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's curious. Okay, yeah. so the Atlantis Cruiser and Great Meteor Seamounts rise from a broad ridge or plateau, which extends from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge at 37 degrees north, 32 degrees west, southeast to the Great Meteor Seamount. The Atlantis Seamount, briefly explored in 1947 and 1948, was found by echo sounding and submarine photography to have a fairly flat bedrock summit at about 180 fathoms at depth. So that 180 fathoms would be about 
1,080 feet roughly, okay? Covered in some cases by cobbles and in other case, cases by current rippled sand. Its slopes are covered with sand or ooze, symmetrically rippled at 400 fathoms and marked by slump features at 570 fathoms. So picture you got this seamount and it's got a flat top. About a ton of flat pteropod limestone cobbles was dredged from the summit area. Okay, get this. One of the cobbles gave a radiocarbon age of 12,000 years. Ah. Uh. Mm. Mm -hmm. The state of lithification of the limestone, lith in other words, how, 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 you know, you're talking about lithification, you're talking about transformation into a rock-like material, right? Right. So the state of lithification of this limestone suggests that it may have been lithified under subaerial conditions. We defined that, right? What does subaerial mean? In the in the air. In the air, in the atmosphere, the right? Atmosphere. Yeah, right. So, so, right. Again, the state of lithification of the limestone suggests that it may have been lithified under subaerial conditions, and that the seamount may have been an island within the past 12,000 years. <laughs> it's crazy, Ali, that, that, that the geologists are like, well, there's no evidence of any island there. They say that, and yet here, here we are, these people in the 50s basically Duh. say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So the cruiser and great meteor seamounts studied in 1952 have larger, flatter summits at 150 and 165 fathoms depth. These youth, youthful geos, and uh, Kyle, or one of you guys, G-U-Y-O-T, give us the definition, geos, it's pronounced geos. A flat-topped submarine mountain. Wow. Good. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Simple. Flat-topped submarine mountain. These youthful geos may have originated as volcanoes, which were later capped by limestone and more recently have sunk beneath the sea. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's just, it's crazy that this, I mean, these guys were doing science. Oh, why, yeah. Why was it thrown out? Is there any, is it just totally ignored? Or did somebody come along and say, oh, this is all not right? Well, and I remember that in that uh, in that thing he read about where they were basically trashing Ignatius Donnelly's stuff, they built a straw man of a continent first right. and then say there's no evidence of that. But yeah. I mean, as far as actually addressing the science, right. like what, what they did to um, come to these conclusions. Yeah, well, so far what we've seen is there's nothing inconsistent in the science with the idea of there having been a, in fact, there's even a term that, that applies to uh, the Azores Plateau, a microcontinent. And we know that that microcontinent, and we can, we'll get to that, these further studies show that it is composed of continental rock with continental minerals rather than um, basaltic oceanic rock. And the explanation there is presumably that when the spreading occurred, you had chunks of the continental cl uh, continent essentially left behind flanking the mid-Atlantic Ridge. And so you've got this, this chunk of this granitic, basically this granitic material, you know, almost like a tooth, you know, within, with a root going down into the basaltic oceanic crust. And as the oceanic crust heaves up and down, it's carrying this microcontinent with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. And that 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 piece of microcontinent or whatever is left over from the, from the like the, what is it called the Eurasian megacontinent basically is a piece of that or something. Yeah, when when yes, when they were uh, Gondwana was yeah. together, right, and and then they're spreading. You have Africa and Europe moving to the east. You have North America and South America being pushed to the west. You have like a piece of the continental material. Yeah. Left behind. Left behind in the middle. That's Left behind in the middle. Cool. <laughs> so here you can see the cruiser seamount. 
the Me Great Meteor Seamount, the Plato Seamount, and the Atlantis Seamount. So during the Ice Age, I think it's now safe to conclude these would have been large, almost mountainous islands rising above the ocean level. Over here, where you have what is now the islands of the Azores, were probably interconnected. And, and it's possible that, that a large section of this submerged microcontinent here was then above sea level. So all the pieces began to fit, and it's almost as if Plato was uncannily accurate. But still, we're, we're still only scratching the surface here of this thing.